Uh, my name is Brian Anderson. I'm the VP of IT for Eagle Technologies. I appreciate everybody hopping on today. I see the, the list is filling up fast. Uh, as the title suggests today, we're going to be talking about Aruba ClearPass, a role-based network access control solution. I see a lot of familiar names on the attendee list. Uh, I think a lot of you worked with Eagle in the past. Um, simply put, we're a data center integrator or VAR. We feel like we know server storage, networking, business continuity, disaster recovery, backups, cybersecurity. We feel like we know that really well. We help a lot of folks uh, when to understand to position data in the cloud or leverage software as a service. We also have a specialty in helping folks back up and provide business continuity to those cloud apps and, and cloud capabilities. We also have some managed service capabilities around uh, DRAS and managed backups, stuff like that. Um, simply put, you've heard it before, we are heavily engineering focused. We follow a best of breed mentality, which I'll get into a little bit more on the next slide. Um, we like to get geared up and do our own installs and support. We feel like that gives us a really great cradle to grave mentality, keeps us really hooked into the products and solutions we represent, and we think that's a better mousetrap for our customers. Um, I think what's most important to us is our credibility. Um, you know, that's, that means earned trust, right? So uh, everything we do is centered around that earned trust. Uh, as I've mentioned the last couple of weeks, our company is really even built to ensure that. Um, we are an engineer-owned company. The same three engineers have owned the company for four decades. Um, they built a company that's really more engineering focused. Our salespeople don't have quarterly numbers. I don't think you'll find another entity that can say that. They believe it poisons the process. They want us to always do what's right for the customer. Engineers like me can always do what's right for the customer. I don't get measured on sales at all. Uh, I routinely talk people out of products if I think that's the best idea for them. Um, I'm very fond of telling folks that maybe it's a good idea to wait three or six months because there's that perfect time to strike or to, to adopt a new solution. Um, but, you know, simply put, earning and maintaining your trust is, is really important to Eagle. I think that's why we've been around for 40 years. We, uh, we do a lot of due diligence. Um, we like to see through the hype, as we say on this slide. So we're constantly looking at new products. We would prefer to do the due diligence, to go out there and find what we think is the best product, and then get trained up to represent that product, to do the installs, to do the architecture um, at any given time. We're going through some fairly long POCs. Uh, gosh, I think we're doing three POCs right now um, where we actually have the products in-house. Uh, we're trying to get more familiar with them. You know, the, the funny part is, is most of those products won't see the light of day in Eagle's portfolio. Uh, we'll probably pass because we don't think they're transformative enough or maybe they're not better than something we already have. But going through all of that due diligence gives us a lot of confidence. And I have to say my favorite thing to do in a meeting is to be challenged on why we are speaking about a particular product because I get really enthused about that. And we spend a lot of time thinking about that. As an example, we have a lot of processes that we follow to keep us honest, you know, to make sure that we don't get enamored by a shiny toy or a, or, you know, a relationship we have with a product. Um, we spend a lot of time, like I said, demoing products and testing products. Um, the process is really important to us. It helps ensure um, that we are finding something that's better perhaps than what's in the industry now, that it works, that the architecture works, not just the marketing, and that it indeed helps our customers. So my last slide was just to show a couple of numbers that I, I think I debuted last week. This one you hear all the time. Um, come October, in about five months, we will have been in business for 40 years. Uh, that's a long time in the IT industry. Uh, I've been with Eagle for almost 10 years, and folks like Anthony and I are actually dragging the number down. Our average tenure fluctuates with new hires, but we're looking at around 15 years of average tenure right now uh, with Eagle employees. Uh, that adds up to a lot of combined engineering experience. Um, I think the number that I'm most proud of on this slide, though, is the fact that uh, over two-thirds of our customers actually come back for more, right? They, they appreciate all of the due diligence, all of the work that we put into the solutions that we represent, and they come back and they buy additional products from us. Um, as it relates to customer tenure, those are some numbers I'm pretty proud of as well. Nearly half of our customers have worked with us for over five years. That means they've gone through major refreshes with us. We've got a surprising amount of customers uh, considering how transformative IT is that have been with us for more than a decade. Um, I, I personally, Anthony, I think we need to start showcasing some of these customers because we have really long relationships uh, with a lot of these customers. These are folks that I consider friends that we talk with pretty frequently. 
So really that that's that's my piece. I mean, in short, Eagle's been in business for a long time. It's allowed us to build a lot of stability and experience, and, and we believe that translates into customer success and good outcomes for our customers. And welcome everybody. Uh, uh, looking forward to a, a good good presentation. And um, uh, like like uh, like Brian had said, if you have any questions, uh, I guess put them in the Q and A, and we'll uh, you know hopefully be able to address them as we uh, as we move along or or at the end. Um, so I kind of want to start it a little bit with um, you know some of the top IT concerns that 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 we see, and, and specifically, you know we're talking about ClearPass today, and 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 you know ClearPass is really all about you know network access control and, and policy and, and what devices are on your network. So, you know, when we look at this, we, um, we, really, we really focus on, um, you know, controlling what is connected to your network. And, and really, it's just, it's about visibility. Um, you know, the first question is, is what's on your network? Uh, I don't know how many uh, customers I've worked with, and it's, it's just a hard question to answer a lot of times, especially with the number of devices, whether it's domain devices or, or you know, everybody's got a phone or you've got customers with guests and so forth. Um, and then you've got these, um, you know, IOT types of devices, you know, that are coming on the network. So all of these devices um, um, in, in some cases need, um, you know, different levels of access. In most cases they do. Um, so, so really, you know, being able to, number one, have this visibility of what's on your network. Um, if you don't know what's on your network, you really, you know, have no way of really applying any kind of control or policy to it. So, um, so, so those are really some of the, the top IT concerns that we see is, um, you know, people moving with mobility, uh, they're bringing different devices. It's not just a domain, um, you know, a domain device, which is very controlled by an organization. Um, and then it just kind of comes down, you know, authentication. And that's where we're going to dig in quite a bit because authentication um, you know, traditionally has is, is been, um, you know, what, what are your credentials? You know, is, your, is it a domain machine? Um, is it part of the domain? Um, but there's a lot of other authentications that, that start coming into play when we start looking at different devices like IoT devices and printers and some of these devices that really are headless and really can't come on, uh, really cannot um, authenticate mm -hmm. themselves to the network. So as we follow up with that, what's on your network, you know, when we start looking at ClearPass, this really kind of sums up a lot of what, of what we focus on. So, you know, device discovery profiling is really the key piece of, of providing that visibility. And we, we, we have a term called fingerprinting. And, and what that really means is when a device comes on the network, whether it's authenticated device, a domain device, whether it's a, a, a personal device that, that has, um, username passwords on the domain, uh, whether it's a, um, you know, somebody's cell phone, whether it's a camera, whatever the case may be, there's a, a lot of pieces of, of the, you know, when they come onto the network that provide us this visibility. Um, at the lowest level, you know, what's the Mac vendor, what's the, what, you know, who, who developed the product? I mean, that's a piece of uh, fingerprinting information. Uh, DHCP is a, is a very uh, rich source of information um, within ClearPass, um, you know, everybody typically has a DHCP server, and if you have a, you know, if you're doing DHCP relay from uh, one network, and, and so that devices can get addresses, um, we we have you send a DHCP relay, just the just the request um, to ClearPass, and and ClearPass basically pulls information out of that request and starts to build this endpoint database of of what these devices are. So from a visibility perspective, and I'm going to show you that later in the demo, um, it really provides you, um, you know, all the different devices and kind of categorizes them and so forth. Um, then we kind of get down into um, some of the, um, the things that separate um, what we consider a traditional um, network access device or radius platform. And, and that is where we get into, into some context. So all this context that I'm talking about is really, um, it's what type of device, it can, context can be uh, what time of day is it, where are you authenticating from, um, all this other information that can be used outside of just username, password, or uh, machine authentication with a domain device. So this context is also used to write policy. Um, and from, from the, you know, the policies that we create, you know, based on, you know, you know have you authenticated, um, then we, we get into really the role side of it. 
So every, every device person that comes on the network um, is, is provided a role. And a role is just purely a, uh, think of it almost like a firewall policy in some cases. Uh, depending on where you're doing your enforcement, it could be a, a firewall policy if you're, if you're doing it on, a, on, a, on an Aruba controller. Um, if you're doing it on an edge switch, it's, um, you know, a switch isn't a firewall, so it becomes just a dynamic ACL. Uh, but, but regardless, in, in an Aruba world, that's called a role. And, and based on who you are, how you've authenticated, and what type of device you have um, is, is how we get assigned uh, the role. And so that really gets down into the enforcement side then. So once we know who you are, what type of device you are, um, then, we, then we, get, we push that um, either that ACL or we push that uh, uh, radius uh, attribute out to the, um, to the controller or, or, or the switch and basically enforce uh, so, that, so that when you're on the network, um, you're enforced based on the policy that you've given. So we've talked a lot about visibility and profiling, um, and and really, you know, it, it really comes down to, um, you know, the, the fact that we have so many different devices hitting the network today, that um, ClearPass becomes this central uh, point. Think of it as a clearinghouse almost, because everything, whether it's wired, whether it's wireless, whether you're coming in from a VPN. Um, to have visibility across the network, you need the central policy, uh, central policy control. Um, if, if you run multiple policy engines, let's call it, um, and, and especially if they don't talk to each other, now you've had multiple places of doing operations and, you've, and you really are, are become vulnerable of not being able to really treat the, the network holistically. So let's talk a little bit about role-based access, and and um, you know, and, and I de definitely did touch on this. Um, and and it looks like we've got our first poll question up there also. So um, um, you know, as as uh, you know, as you go along, you know, you can answer those poll questions. So so as we start looking at um, role-based access, this is where we start differentiating from a traditional um, you know a traditional radius platform because at, at the heart of it. Um, ClearPass is a radius platform. Um, I'd like to make uh, a little bit of an analogy here, um, and if we can use a car analogy. So I drive a Ford Escape. Um, my Ford Escape um, is, is, in my mind, is kind of the equivalent of our traditional um, NAP product, like a Microsoft Radius or a, uh, you know, maybe a Cisco ACS or, or something like that. They were built um, you know, to, to, to pretty much provide pure radius access. Just like my escape, if you can, if you compare it, you know, to a Tesla, let's say, um, if you compare them to um, both the escape and the Tesla, gets you from A to B. But if you think of ClearPass as being more of a Tesla, um, no, no, no bias that I'm pretty fond of ClearPass, but you know, the Tesla gets you from A to B just like my my escape does. So at, at the very basics, radius is, is accomplished with with MPS and some of the traditional radius platforms, just and ClearPass does all those traditional things that a radius server does, but it provides a whole lot more, just like a, a Tesla may you know, provide you know, a lot more um, uh, bells and whistles and, and all the um, uh, extras that you get with it. So you know, one of the other key things to remember is that with, with ClearPass is that it is vendor agnostic. So again, as long as the, the device, um, the switch or the controller, um, mobility controller, as long as they support 802.1x, um, you can bring that into ClearPass and, and basically have role-based access um, you know, with those devices. We have many, many networks that are running um, different switch vendors as an example, you know, whether it be Cisco or, or um, Juniper or whatever the case may be. Uh, as long as they support that one X and, and you can work with them, it is a very vendor, uh, vendor agnostic type of solution. Hey, Brian. Yep. Uh, other Brian here. I think that's a really important point. A lot of folks see a product like this and they think that it's going to involve a big forklift, right? Or a greenfield type initiative, but uh, it's really important to mention that you guys play well with others, right? Absolutely. Absolutely the case. 
Okay, so let's talk a little bit about role-based access and, um, and, and kind of how this all works. So as we start looking at all the different devices, you know, on the left that you may have, whether they're domain devices, whether it's a BYOD, um, IoT lots, you know, IoT, HVAC, all the different types of, of devices that, that want access to the network. And there's a lot of stories out there. You hear a lot of people talking about, um, you know, and it gets back to that visibility thing. Um, one of the favorite ones that I have, and it wasn't so favorite to the organization, but, you know, a pot machine was brought in into the, into the break room and plugged in and, and nobody really thought two things about it, except the fact that they also were able to plug into a port because they wanted to have, you know, access, you know, for that machine to get on the network. And, and, it, and it turned out that that, um, you know, that, that ended up causing some security problems down the road. So, so the, the idea that, um, you know, when, when a device gets plugged into the network and that it gets profiled and that based on that profile, it gets put in the right role or in the right, uh, a role can be as simply, a, like I said, as, a, as an ACL or can be put a, on a VLAN. But as long as you've got that visibility, then you know that that device is, is, is kind of where it's supposed to be. And another uh, key component to that too is, is that now you've got one central area. If, if you find a device that is having an issue, um, it's a fairly easy way to then um, block that, that device from getting on the network or even when they, when they plug in that they will get denied access. So as we look at this little example here, so what we have is from an employee role, uh, as an employee, he's gonna get the employee or he or she's gonna get the employee role. And they're also going to have access to some of the, you know, IoT devices like, like a, uh, you know, a, a TV cast or maybe a printer or something of that nature. But at, at this point, that employee, that role that they're getting, um, you know, they don't have access to some of the, the, uh, the physical security and, and some of the, the uh, HVAC types of uh, departments. All right, let's drop in to look at a couple of use cases here and, and kind of how we how we actually use ClearPass. So I talked about that traditional NAC. Again, this is this is the Ford, this is my Ford Escape. Um, you know, basically a traditional radius. You know, whether it's you know NPS, free radius, Cisco ACS, whatever the case may be. Um, you know, it'll connect to Active Directory for as an example, and you can you can authenticate and you can get on the network. That's pretty much the extent of what you can do there. There's no expanded policy. Um, uh, kind of like my Ford Escape. There's nothing really, not a lot of bells and whistles, but it does get me from A to B. So, you know, as you look at um, from a, you know, authorization perspective, um, so again, you know, enterprise laptop all the way to BYOD phones, um, you know, you can have an enterprise laptop that, that logs in with domain credentials and also um, machine authentication because it is a member of the domain that same individual could be on their BOILD device. And because it is a, you know, it is not a domain device, but they use their domain username password to get on, we're gonna put them in a different role and that role may be just internet only. Um, they've authenticated to the network, so we know they're an employee, but we're gonna just give them uh, internet only because they are a BOD device. So, and, and this is really where context all comes into, in, into play and, and how it all, um, you know, easily kind of works out. You know, in, in this in particular example, we see that they're joining the same wireless network, the same corp secure network, but they're getting two completely different roles based on which device that they use to get on the network. So it really gives you that, uh, that, that control and flexibility um, to, to be able to, to allow your, your employees on the network, you know, with, with different types of devices, but this domain device is going to get a lot richer access, of course, internally based on who they are in the organization. So same user, same, same identity store, which if that's Active Directory or if that's LDAP or whatever the case is, and ClearPass has a very rich source of, um, of different things that you can authenticate, directory services that you can authenticate to. Um, another typical example is, is if, if, if as an organization you acquire another company, um, part of that acquisition, maybe they're running Active Directory also. You can add their Active Directory to ClearPass and, and now when those this new company employees authenticate under your ClearPass platform, we're gonna use their Active Directory as a source of um, authentication. So in this specific case is, 
you know, we don't we don't have the the requirement of of having separate SSIDs. Um, a very traditional approach to wireless is 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 you have separate SSIDs that map to different VLANs, and then the enforcement of that is based on IP space or based on the, on that where that VLAN resides. Uh, in this case, the, the enforcement happens right at the entry point, whether that is a, um, a like you said, a wireless network with SSIDs, or whether that's a, a an Ethernet port that they're connecting into. And, and in today's world, you know, everybody is, is is highly reliant relying on VPN these days. Um, it's the same kind of concept, whether you're in the office or out of the office. That same authentication and policy would apply. Yeah, I think this is really cool and powerful. I mean. The, the dynamic nature of it really simplify, allows you to simplify, but also not forget to change policies. You know, you set a certain port a certain way, and then something else might need that port. Um, you know, it really takes the manual, I don't know, fun out of it, right? Um, you, you set it up once, and you know that it's going to happen that way and dynamically get assigned, no matter what device comes in. That's so, correct. Yep. Yeah, really simplify security. And gets rid of some of those. Uh oh, I forgot about that moments. That's correct. And Anthony, I've been talking about a bunch of cybersecurity uh, intrusions lately, and I think my favorite one is a fish tank IoT sensor, right? That wasn't properly set up on the network and allowed hackers to get into their uh, their data center, right? So it's just it's this type of role based access wizard that can get you out in front of that and make it a lot easier to profile these devices. Absolutely. I mean, from a, from a security perspective, it, it's really an all encompassing solution. It it's begins with the access to the network. Um, and then, of course, you have perimeter firewalls. But but at the end of the day, it's, it's really a complete system uh, and, and, and working. You can have one and then the, then you have some uh, vulnerabilities. Um, if you have both, you, you kind of implement it as, uh, as as full circle as what we want to call three, 360 degree uh, uh, you know, protection. So again, the same the same uh, uh, access is really applied to to, to wired. Uh, I'm sure many of you get, uh, folks on the on the on the call. Have, have, you know, when you look at a, a wired jack on the, on the side of your wall, in healthcare is um, if you've been in of course in a hospital room, you know they may have four or five different jacks and they're all colored with different colors and 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 then you need to plug into the orange port if you want access to. To a certain set of resources before you plug into the blue port uh, if you're a guest. Um, so this is what gets eliminated with role-based access on the wire. You have one what you can consider a universal port. Um, it doesn't matter what port you plug into because what's going to happen is, is you're going to be uh, profiled and then you're either going to be authenticated um, or profiled and you're going to be put on the right VLAN right there at the port. Um, we like to call this colorless port because really you take all these these uh, these four colors up here and you just put it into a single universal port and depending on what plugs into that port is what VLAN it gets access to and what policy it actually receives. So, so operationally it makes it very simple you don't have to worry about on the, at least on the wired side you know ports one through eight are for um, the headless devices are, are in the rest of them, or the next, next set of ports are for, for actual enterprise access, uh, data VLAN, and then, then you may have some, some guest ports that are wired into a conference room. So, so that, that kind of eliminates a lot of that, uh, that approach. So let's talk a little bit about guest access. So guest access is, uh, is another piece that, um, that ClearPass provides. Uh, you know, ClearPass was developed over the last 10 years um, and you know it really started as a very uh, rich guest access platform, and and then it evolved into um, you know offering a lot of more what we would call over the top services. Um, today the um, guest access is just included with the platform, and and there's a lot of different ways that you can uh, that you can set up the guest actual the, the, the portal. Um, you could use a self registration where where the, the client gets a captive portal, just like you're in a hotel room, and you and you 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 log into it, you put your email into it, maybe your phone number, and and we'll send you the uh, the SMS text of what your credentials are, and then it automatically logs you onto the network. You can have sponsored guests, so you can pretty much have a sponsor. So if you know the person that you're trying to visit, 
um, you could actually put that in there if that's a company policy and then that person will get an email and then they'll click a button on that email and that email will then grant this, this guest access. Um, you could even use like social media. You could log into the guest portal with a, with a social media account if, uh, if that's something that you wanted to uh, use as the um, you know, kind of authentication method um, to, to assure that you, you have some idea of who these, uh, these, these, these folks are. So a lot of flexibility in, uh, in creating this, uh, this, this, this guest experience uh, you know, for, your, for your users. So some of the so other before we move on, Brian, we do have a question. Um, so it came into the chat. What is used to profile identify a host to send it to the correct VLAN? Okay, so basically, what, like, how does it know? You know, like MAC address. Is it you know operating system type hardware? Sure. Like, yeah. yeah. Um, I guess in, in the three that you just mentioned, Anthony, I, I just say all of the above. Uh, and, and the reason I say that is because when, when we get into ClearPass, you, you could use all three of those, which would be considered contacts, to determine what the, what the role is. So at that point, let's just, um, let's say you have a security camera and you plug in a security camera. Security camera doesn't do dot one X. So, it, so effectively what happens is that security camera plugs into the network, ClearPass gets the Mac off, the Mac off has a vendor ID, so there's the Mac. So we know it's, and, and all of our security cameras in my organization are built by you know one one vendor. So we know that that's good. And then we get a DHCP relay because that that device needs an IP to get on the phone, well or get on the network. So that DHCP relay information knows more about that device, kind of what operating system it is, and, and, and those sorts of things. So so really all those all those pieces of information are used for policy, and then we we send out a radius. Um, attribute down to the switch uh, or to the to the wireless controller and and part of that has the VLAN that you're going to put that user on along with the policy whether it's a firewall policy if it's a controller uh, wireless controller from Aruba or whether it's a switch we'll send a dynamic ACL that maybe restricts ask access to all the private IP space in the organization and only allows that wired user to get access to the internet as an example Okay, perfect. And we do have a follow up to that. Um, just, you know, talking about somebody potentially spoofing a MAC address, you know, how do you ensure that that person that spoofed a MAC address doesn't get on the targeted VLAN that they want? I guess part of it is because there's multiple authentications that are happening, right? The user and other things involved, or maybe you can expand on that. Yeah, so, so yeah, Mac, Mac authentication is, um, you're right, it is very, um, very easy for anybody to Google up and determine how do I, how do I spoof a Mac. Um, there's a couple components to that. So that Mac address is used and when we create the endpoint database, um, also some of the other profiling information is brought on like, like what operating system is, belongs to this Mac address and so forth. A typical example might be, you know, somebody sees a printer is plugged into the wall. So they basically look at the printer a little bit in the back and they maybe see a MAC address, you know, on the, on the serial number, whatever, on the back of that printer. So they set their, they set their device up for that, that MAC address. So if it's just straight MAC authentication, then that is going to, that's going to let them on the network. But, but the fact that we take it a little bit farther and we basically profile it, that this MAC address is tied to this other uh, context, um, operating system, who made the, who made the, um, the device, whether it's an HP printer or whatever the case may be, um, we can use that information. Uh, so what happens then is if, if, if we see that Mac come on and just say now it's a, um, it's a, a Mac OS or a Windows workstation. So, so basically somebody has put that Mac address on, you know, spoof that Mac. Um, we're going to deny that access uh, because the endpoint information does not match uh, from what we have profiled that device at from, from the very beginning. So that, that's, that's one concept that we have of, uh, of assuring that, that Mac, uh, Mac spoofing does not occur. If it's, there's also other, con uh, other, other directions you can go with that. So when I talked about different authentication sources, uh, so maybe what you want to do is you want to take it another step and maybe all your printers, if we stay on that example, um, 
you have a database of all the printers on your network. And, and that database has, has all the MAC addresses of those printers. Um, so, you know, that can be another source of information um, that we can actually pull from to, to, to verify that that, uh, that device is, um, is, is your printer and not, you know, maybe somebody else's printer or, or, or that, those sorts of things. Hey, Brian. Um, yep. The First, the time Nazi in me wants to let you know you got about 15 minutes left. Um, okay. But but also, um, is is there a way to introduce an audit or a review process as part of this process as well? So as far as um, of determining what devices um, are yeah, on let's, your let's say for instance somebody looks up and they see a camera and it's made by Foscam and so they spoof the MAC address. Um, mm -hmm. What what other precautions would would be introduced with ClearPass that would let you understand what had happened? So that a new devices come online. Yeah, so it's it's pretty much back to what you know as as far as again the the profiling information that we have. It's really all about what that endpoint database is is built on. Um, as far as an audit uh, version of that, the endpoint database you know will contain every device that you have. So that could be a source of of auditing. Um, you could use other, like I said, other types of uh, sources, um, you know, like I said, if you have a database of some flavor that you could, that you could authorize against. Hopefully that kind of answers your question. Yeah, that was helpful. Thank you. Okay. Um, one other thing I want to touch on here, and then we're going to, we're going to probably pretty quickly kind of move through uh, a couple more slides and then I want to show you the demo. Um, some of the other things that we have in ClearPass, and these are uh, expandable applications uh, and, and specifically onboard. So with onboard, the idea here is you have a BYOD device, and what you want to do is you want to give that BYOD device a better than normal uh, guest access, uh, but not as good as access probably as a domain device. So uh, ClearPass has a certificate authority built into it. So what happens is there's an onboarding process that allows it to um, connect to ClearPass. It's a self-registration type of workflow. Um, and ClearPass will push a certificate down to that device. So now that device can join the secure network and do certificate TLS authentication um, because it was generated, that certificate was generated by ClearPass. So now that device, you know, although it's not a domain device, it is a very trusted device and maybe they have access to some different dashboards and so forth um, within the organization versus guests. And OnGuard again, OnGuard is a, um, uh, this is an agent that you put on the device. It's typically targeted for organizations that have contractors coming in and they bring their own, let's say, a Windows uh, machine or, or Mac OS machine. Um, again, a self-driven uh, workflow when they first authenticate. Um, maybe you have a group with an active directory for contractors um, and they authenticate to that group. Because they're in that group, it self, it self uh, redirects them to a uh, a, a portal and, and they download the, the OnGuard agent and they put that on their machine. That agent then has policies of its own, meaning you have to have your firewall enabled. You have to be at a certain level of antivirus. Um, you can't use any USB ports while you're in our organization. And, and so what happens is, is every time that that, that individual connects, uh, the OnGuard agent's running and it will send information to ClearPass and just think of it as sending a red light, green light, um, you know, if everything's in compliance. And if it's not in compliance, they, the next time they open their web browser, they'll get redirected to a page that enforces them and tells them that they're not in compliance. And it'll also provide them some information as to what may be not in compliance, like turn your firewall off, that sort of thing. And, and the onboard and the, and the on guard or add on applications that you can um, you know purchase uh, for ClearPass. Guest is included all with our access licenses included in the platform. The other piece I want to touch on then is third party integration because it is a holistic system and the fact that this is multi vendor, but the idea that that now you can integrate with uh, different SIM platforms or if you've got AirWatch mobile device management, same kind of thing when that. When that device comes on, ClearPass can query AirWatch and basically say, is this device in compliance? Um, uh, ServiceNow, you can have workflows set up um, to set up so that if, if there is an issue that it automatically 
logs this issue and and uh, within ServiceNow, so when they when they even generate a ticket, so that when they open up that ticket, they see some information directly from ClearPass as to what may be the problem. So again, multi vendor and then also in a, you know high integration um, with a, a, a very large number of third third parties. So how we're different, I mean, again, it comes down to visibility um, and, and automation, uh, dynamic role-based access. Um, you know, so, it's, so again, it's, it's kind of the, the Tesla of the car, right? It, it basically allows you to, to pull all these things together um, and not only do just straight authentication, but also do a, a lot of context aware um, uh, pieces of context to, to develop the policy. Okay, let me shift gears a little bit. And um, I want to go ahead and show you guys a demo here, just to kind of give you an idea of how, kind of how this works. First of all, let me kind of show you, I'm going to show you, just give you a real quick, uh, real quick kind of view of ClearPass. Um, so this is the ClearPass platform. Um, you know, has has a you know just a, a typical normal dashboard that you can see some really some really quick things on the, on a glance. You build ClearPass in a cluster, so you have what we call a publisher and subscriber, uh, so that you have redundancy within your uh, within your AAA policy uh, uh, architecture. Um, from a monitoring perspective, um, I talk a lot about visibility. Um, you know, visibility again is is key. You really can't control what you can't see. So this is that endpoint database that, uh, that I was talking about. So, I mean, you can install ClearPass, and again, ClearPass is, um, you can install it on a VM, uh, on uh, Hyper-V, um, you can, it, it comes as an appliance. So you can install it on all, you know, any, any three variants, either virtual or a hardware appliance. If you, if you simply install it on a VM and start pointing your DHCP relays to it and you don't do anything else, What's going to happen is, is it, this this whole endpoint uh, profiler is going to start building. So as you can see, you know, based on the DHCP fingerprint, it's 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 going through and it's it's pretty much categorizing what all these devices are on your network. Um, so it gives you a very rich rich visibility into you know a lot of different you know types of devices, you know, Nest and T-Link, all the different devices that may be on your network. Um, the other thing that's a lot different is you use it just straight for a radius platform. So you say, okay, you know what, I've got Microsoft radius today. I want to get into a richer set of policy and, 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 and more network access control with my network. Um, the, other, the other key thing is access tracker. So one of the things that every authentication that comes in is, is runs through access tracker. And so with a simple click, you can just click and open this up and then you see exactly what type of device this is. And, and what kind of roles that, that were given to this device. Um, and then, you know, you can drill down into it and see specifically a lot of the different radius pieces of information. So where this, where this authentication come, you know, where it actually came from um, and, um, you know, what port it was on and that sort of thing. So very, very easy to see, um, you know, if somebody calls in with an issue and, and you know something about them, um, you can you can filter, you know. In this case, I'm filtering on just a NAS IP. So all the authentications that are coming from this particular uh, device. In this case, this is a switch. So you, you can filter very very quickly and, and very very trouble and easy to troubleshoot. Um, you know, versus you know, as far as what's going on with this type of device. So let me pull up something and I'm going to show you the demo here. So this here, this is a visualization. Uh, of a switch that I have here in my lab. Um, this is not a product. This is just purely for remote demo purposes. And it's, it's, it's kind of the easiest way to kind of show, you know, kind of different uh, how, how the, the profiling and so forth works. So um, what actually happens here is when, when I plug in a device, um, ClearPass effectively sends a uh, uh, API information from the switch to this web page so that you can get a visualization of how we plug it in. So what I'm going to simply do is I'm going to plug in, I'm going to plug into a port, a device. And in this case, I plugged in an Apple TV. Uh, so you can see how quickly that actually happened. Um, and that's because this device has already been, uh, 
it's, it's already been authenticated. So if we, we kind of go up here, we can see, you know, 1045. So this guy came in at 1044. And, and, and here's my Apple TV. So this is how quickly it came up uh, as far as, you know, the Mac authentication happened and then what type of device it is. So, so Brian, I just want to reiterate, you have a physical switch right next to you that you're, you're initiating these connections with. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. So, um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start plugging in a few more devices and, you know, it, it, I'm going to plug in a, a couple of devices that take a little longer to boot up. So I'm going to plug them in first. Um, and, and, well, these are, and I was going to say just one other thing. If you take that Apple TV and take it from port two and plug it into port seven, for instance, Mm -hmm. Like it will automatically realize that and put it on the proper VLAN. Right. Let me do that. So I, pop, I took it out of port two and I plugged it into port seven. And, uh, and, and that's, again, that's, that's kind of how this works. It doesn't matter what ports you plug into. Uh, on, on my particular switch, you apply AAA policy on a per port basis. This is the only port that I have open that doesn't have any, uh, uh, policy on it so that I can maybe connect it to the network or do whatever I want to do. So as you see here in port three, um, it actually came up and it, and it shows that this is a, it's a Cisco phone. So, you know, that, that is, uh, that, that's kind of the other aspect of it as, as, as these phones start booting up and so forth. Um, I just went ahead and plugged in a, uh, uh, my MacBook and it shows up as a dot one X authentication uh, on this port here. So this guy popped up, finally got done booting, and this is an actual on a via phone. I've got one other device I can plug in here, and I'll plug that device in, <clears throat> and, that, and that device is, uh, is, 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 uh, is actually a, a Mac-based camera. Uh, so you can see that that actually came up. So this is really kind of the power of, uh, of, of, of really, it shows two things. It shows colorless port, but it also shows, um, you know, authentications and, and whether you, you do wireless authentications or whether you do wired authentications, it's, uh, it's, it's really kind of the same concept. And you can see these authentications here. That's very cool. I wish we would have sent you some high res camera on a tripod pointed at the switch. That's my, yeah. that's my yeah. only remorse. <laughs> well, you know, and that's an interesting story. I was at a trade show last year um, and um, right next to us was a, um, an IP phone. Uh, company and um, their phones were all Android based. So I said, you know what? I've never seen this device before. Let me let me plug. Do you mind if I plug this in here? And I got it. I goes, yeah, sure, go ahead. So I plugged it in and uh, profiled it. And in, in, in our in, in our in, uh, in environment here, it actually put it on the guest network, which allowed it to get out to the internet. And then we picked up the receiver and we had dial tone. So it, you know, it it, um, it it definitely is a, a very dynamic kind of process. One other thing I want to show you here too, because most organizations, so if I unplug the, my Mac PC and I plug it into the back of one of these phones, which is a, a very, very typical, um, you know, kind of deployment, what you'll see here is that it popped up and now I'm, this, my Mac is plugged into the back of an Avaya phone. So again, and this is kind of the, um, to some degree, it's, it's part of the switch. Um, the switch, basically, everything that's plugged in, so you could plug a hub into one of these ports. Every single device on that hub will go through the authentication process. So this is a typical scenario where you have a desktop phone and you have a, uh, uh, they, they plug their workstations in the back of it because you have a single drop, you know, uh, run to your, uh, you know, run to that cube or to that office. 